Hey everybody, do you really here? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Koto Wins along Okita Soji's route. Kondo has just been shot and we're about to give the news to Okita, so expect him to fly off the handle here. I don't think this really needs any more preface than that. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Actually, I can ask you the same question. Huh? You're on the night shift just like me. What are you doing up? Um, well... Well, I'm not as deep a sleeper as you, so... All the commotion woke me, too. I was just up because I was curious what the commotion was. Just like Okita, but I wasn't a fury. The sunlight didn't bother me. There was no way I could say that now, though. Plenty of the rank-and-file soldiers were nearby, and they had no idea the Furies even existed. So, what happened? Kondo was shot. What? His eyes went wide. And? Is it serious? It didn't just graze him, if that's what you mean. What do you mean it didn't just graze him? How can you be so calm when Kondo's been hurt? I thought for a moment that Okito was going to grab Hijikata and shake him. I'd never seen the man so agitated before. Calm down, Soji. What's the point of getting mad at Toshi? I am calm. Could have fooled me. Anyways, tell me the details of what happened. Who shot him? You guys already killed them or arrested them, right? Allow me to explain, you see. Shimada calmly recounted the events of the Kondo shooting. Then... You only sent three men with him. What are you, insane? You know how dangerous it is out there for him right now. Kondo was going to Nijo Castle for a war conference as the chief of the Shinsengumi. Some of the other people there were shogun at bigwigs. We couldn't show up with a bunch of guards. Some of the men high up in the government aren't real fond of the Shinsengumi. And they might have gotten the wrong idea. Is that what you're saying? I mean, he could have died out there. So, it's more important for us to look good than for Kono to get shot. Didn't say that. Then why? Soji, this isn't Toshi's fault. Kondo only wanted to take us for the escort. Kondo said himself that it would be unbecoming for the chief of the Shinsengumi to be surrounded by a bunch of guards for his own protection. So, if you want to blame someone, we're it. It was our job to protect the chief, and we failed. Well, it's hard to protect somebody from a gunshot, Shimada. Not your fault. Even if he had, like, ten guys around him, it would still be easy for him to get shot. Hey, Jakarta put Kondo's life in danger when he let him go out with only three men. Besides, I'm finding it a little hard to believe that was really what Kondo wanted to do. Maybe someone talked him into it. Always oh, trying to look good. Like, hey, Jakarta. Soji! Kondo. Didn't want to risk leaving the magistrate's office undefended just to cover his own tail. This place had represented Yoshinobu's authority in Kyoto. He didn't want to take any chances with it. That was something Kono would say. I let him do it. That was a mistake. I don't plan on making any crap excuses on that front. I could sense that Hijikata actually wanted to have many guards watch over Kondo as well. His bitter expression said it all. If he dies, it's your ass in the fire, Hijikata. If he dies, I'll never ever forgive you. And I'll find you no matter where you may be, and I'll kill you. I could almost see a flame swirling in his black eyes as it glared at Hijikata with impunity. Then, Okita turned around and stormed back to his own room without another word. Nagakura's men returned as the sun was setting. <sighs> We're back, Chizuru. Oh, Nagakura, Harada, welcome back. So, how was it? Did you find out who the culprit was? Unfortunately, we weren't able to get any clues. However, we were able to recover the bodies of those who were murdered in the attack, so for that it was worth going. <sighs> Forget that. How's Kondo doing? Is his condition any better? Actually, he has a high fever. He can't talk right now. That doesn't sound good. 
And wouldn't it be better for us to send him to a facility that has more stuff than here to treat him? <sighs> Kono's got the worst luck, huh? Okita? Huh, what's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Well, it's true that I'm a monster, though. I thought that something must have been off for Okita to joke so lightheartedly like that. Um, what's gotten over you? Nothing, really. Do I look different than normal? Uh, no, but you should. Well, I'm not saying that. The grin was still there, and I wasn't quite sure how to respond to it. Could he really just laugh off something that so obviously had changed him? He's just hiding it really well. Oh, yeah. I gotta talk to Heisuke about something. I think you could just wait here. Of course. Shimpachi, Sano. I'll see you guys later, alright? Take care of Kondo for me. I sighed as I watched him head off toward the back of the compound. Hmm. Later, I was with Yamazaki discussing what to do from now on, and I returned to the common room. With nothing to do, I let my gaze shift toward the star-speckled sky to watch thin clouds drift across the moon. I didn't realize how long I'd been standing there until Heisuke ran up to me. Hey, Chizuru, are you here, Chizuru? What's wrong? Um, have you seen Soji? I can't find him anywhere. What? What had he meant? Something felt wrong. I didn't like it. He went looking for you. Me? You're lying, right? I've been on duty at my station for, well, all night. I never saw Soji. What? Something was definitely wrong. Heisuke, could you tell Hijikata that Okita's gone missing? I have a very bad feeling about this. Yeah, same here. I mean, especially with Kondo being shot and all. Damn, is he alright? I hope he won't be rash. Oh, he will be. Heisuke muttered under his breath as he scurried toward Hijikata's room. What should I do? I knew that I wasn't supposed to go out on my own without express permission from Hijikata, but... I recalled how Okita was behaving earlier this afternoon. He seemed so eerily calm, despite what had happened to Kondo. I couldn't just leave Okita out there by himself. Uh, you better tell Hijikata first before you do anything. I lost myself and ran out the door. Oh, good job, Chizuru. <sighs> it didn't matter to me that I was running out of breath, and I just ran and ran through the night. <sighs> In the middle of a dim pathway, I had finally found him. His sword was drawn, being swung delicately in his hand, but his fierce eyes weren't playing around. Okita moved swiftly between a group of warriors, piercing a man in his throat before sliding to slice the leg of the man standing right behind him. He didn't even bother to wipe the blood off. He just swung and swung and swung. His technique? Oh no, is that Okita? Of the Shinsegumi? Well, that's right. That's a bit too late for you now, though. Wish you would have caught on earlier before I was about to murder you. Okita from the Shinsegumi is here! Retreat! You guys are real stupid. Do you really think I'm about to let any of you go? There was no hesitation in his movements. S stop Even the Satsuma, skilled warriors in their own right, were no match against Okita. The man fighting in the street before me was no human. He was an engine of slaughter. Okita. There was no escape. Okita's skill as a human was practically speed and strength of a fury. He became a force of nature. Not one of the men before him would leave that street alive. As the last fell, he slid his sword still wet with blood back into its sheath, and turned in search of his next victim. Okita! I threw myself into his path. What are you doing here? His gaze was almost sharp enough to draw blood. Okita's aura was radiating with the killer's intent. I almost froze in fear. I came to stop you. His expression twisted into something halfway between stunned surprise and disgust. You stop me. 
I'm just doing my job. You don't get to tell me to stop. There was a cold fury beneath his words that made my throat tighten. Is this really going to help the Shinsengumi? Obviously. My job is to kill our enemies. Your job is to take orders, and this was not ordered. If you really think it's your duty to kill all these men like this, then why did you leave without telling anyone? <sighs> you already know, don't you? This is wrong. Are you trying to say you think I'm doing this for my own reasons, not the Shinsengumi? Yes, I am. He'd wanted to kill anyone who'd had a hand in the attack on Kondo. That was his reason. I knew it. Well, let's say you're right. What's wrong with me doing what I'm doing? Um, well... That's my duty to kill. So long as the result's the same, what's it matter if I get there a little differently? <sighs> How should I answer this? I want you to do the right thing. Okita. It wasn't easy to say what I wanted to, but I pushed forward. If I happen to let the wrong thing slip, it may give him the wrong impression of me. But still, I felt like he needed to hear this. You said yourself that it was your decision to drink the water of life. That this was the path you chose, to be a fury. Maybe I did, so... His glare didn't waver. If you believe in the path you chose, then shouldn't you be trying to follow it the right way? I don't know what you're talking about. He looked down, and I was surprised to see pain on his face. I'm a weapon. All I can do is kill people. I never worried about the notion of what's right or what's wrong. I just kill people, no matter who it was, as long as it was what Kono wanted. Well, that's how I've been living my whole life. Although his stubbornness was showing, I could see the emotions pulling in his eyes, as if this were difficult for him to talk about. I didn't know what kind of life he had lived up until this point, or what kind of thoughts were drifting and colliding inside of him to bring these emotions out enough for him to say it out loud. But, if you just think of yourself as a weapon, I took a deep breath. I think that's fine. If he wants to live as the Shinsengumi sword, it wasn't my place to say otherwise. I knew that, but, but I don't think you should lie to your own heart. My own heart. I think I understand how you feel. Kondo is really important to you. Okita loved Kondo like a brother. How could he simply sit by and do nothing after seeing someone he cared about nearly killed? Sitting by his bedside all day isn't going to make him heal any faster. And protecting the magistrate's office isn't going to save Kondo no matter what you do. Okita must have felt helpless and so he turned to the one thing that could give him the control over life and death he so greatly desired. Battle. I truly understand how you feel. But please, don't lose sight of who you are. Is it really your duty to let your emotions control you? Is that the kind of warrior you are? The fact that you can only kill people, do you really think that's all you have going for yourself? Okita stared down at me, as if I were the most irritating thing in the world for him to look at. But eventually... Chizuru. You keep this up. I know I ain't really kill you this time. How many times had I heard him say he would kill me? Okita! Can you get out of my way already? I hate how all you people act as if you know everything about me and how I feel. Behind the cold ice of his gaze, I could sense a man who would kill without a second thought. Perhaps this would be the time that he finally made good on that threat. But... Even so, I had to stop him. I won't move. If he let his emotions get the better of him, he would surely regret it later, and I couldn't bear to think of him suffering like that. Even if it meant I had to put my own life on the line, I would stop him. If you really want to go, then you'll have to kill me first. His eyes bored into mine, and for several very long seconds, neither of us spoke. He could have easily killed me with the sword in his right hand but his eyelashes shook faintly. <sighs> that was dangerous. Why the hell did you do that? No one would praise you for risking your life to stop a guy like me. I just think you were dumb, but why? I can't just forget about you. He laughed. You're nuts, you know that. Was 
I imagining things? His words didn't seem to have the usual snide edge attached to them. Just as the silence began to stretch to uncomfortable levels, I heard a voice. Hey, the guy over there is... So are you, right? This voice. I finally found you. You've come all the way here. Harada, Saito. Soji, this is too much even for you. What were you going to do if people of other domains saw you? <laughs> I'm not dumb enough to get caught. Don't underestimate me. You kidding me? Somebody could have been watching from a side alley or a window. I understand where you're coming from. Kondo's fever is broken. He'll be fine. Huh. R really? If you don't believe me, why don't you go back to the magistrate and see for yourself? Okay, isn't that a relief, Okita? Are you sure, Hajime? Is Kondo really? I think you of all people know how I would never joke about a thing like this. Uh, he never jokes, period. Just do not ever act out of worry for the chief like that again. Oh, so Kondo's okay then. I'm glad. Oh, Kondo's gonna live. I can end my killing spree happily now. He looked like he couldn't find any other words. I saw his shoulders relax. I expect this sort of thing from Soji. But you, you need to remember to think before you act, Chizuru. Under Harada's hard gaze, I suddenly remembered that I left the compound without permission. Oops. But it was for a good cause. I, I'm sorry. No sooner were the words out of my mouth than we heard the frantic tweeting of a whistle from some distance away. Oh no. Run! Looks like they found us. We need to get out of here before they show up. Yes. We ran as fast as we could toward the Fushimi Magistrate's office. When we returned, Hijikata was waiting for us. He was not pleased. Idiots. Although his words were rough, it looked like Hijikata was relieved. He must have been worried about us, especially Okita. I'll let it slide this time, but don't ever do this again, understand? Well, not a coincidence, Hijikata. I was just thinking the same thing. Since Kondo's gonna be fine, I thought I'd let you off this time. That's so. Gee, thanks. But I don't think that means I forgive you. As he finished, Okita's voice suddenly turned harsh. Uh, um, I... I had left the compounds without approval. I wasn't sure, though, if it meant that I'd be held responsible as well. My heart was pounding. If Soji had it disappeared, you wouldn't have left, right? Yes. Then it was his fault. I let him slide for now, so there's no way I can punish you. <sighs> Get some rest. You haven't slept much today. Oh. I didn't know how to respond. Hijikata wasn't usually... nice. Thank you, Hijikata. I bowed and turned to leave. Nearly at the door, and almost out of earshot, I heard him murmur to himself. So, it's all my fault, huh? <sighs> you really can't blame him. It's Kondo's fault. Kondo! Don't let them get to you, Hijikata. The next day, December 10th, I didn't wake up until evening had arrived. I must have been more tired than I thought. It was nearly time for the night shift to begin, so I leapt into my clothes and dashed out of my room. Um, Okita? Hmm, what is it? Do you know where Kondo is? I went to check up on him, but I didn't see him. He's gone to visit Dr. Matsumoto in Osaka. Dr. Matsumoto? Oh, yeah, so in the meantime, Hijikata's in charge of the troops. Oh, I'm sure he's real happy about that. But I guess since Dr. Matsumoto is going to be the one to watch over Kondo, I don't have to worry. Even though he's a real hard ass and gets on my case about stuff, he's still a good doctor. Gets on your case. Okita, that's not it. He's very worried about your health. Oh, I know. Doesn't change the fact that he gets on my case too much. He gets on it just enough. You just aren't listening. It looked as if Okita had calmed down, but only the day before he'd run off all on his own. 
I had to keep my guard up. Keep an eye on him. No later had I spoken than a gunshot shattered the night air. I saw Okita's jaw clench. <laughs> Okita, no! I rushed to stop Okita, but... Several more gunshots went off in succession, almost as if they were provoking us. Sorry. He dashed by me and ran off toward the sound of gunfire. Okita! I ran after him. What if it's a trap? Why'd you come after me? It's dangerous. Why don't you stay at the magistrate? Well, it's because... I'm worried about you. Because I'm worried about you, Okita. Well, I'm not so weak that I need you to worry about me now, too. I mean, sure, I was ill just a little while ago, but now I'm fine. I understand that, but just know, I was worried. I was sure my feelings were nothing but a burden for Okita, but that didn't mean I could just walk out on him either. You can't get rid of my feelings. They are really something, you know that. Yes, I know. Huh? I had expected him to be sneering over me with a cold expression, but... Come on, let's hurry. Whoever shot Kondo might be in the direction of the gunshot. Oh, wait! This is so foolish. It's like investigating the strange noise upstairs. We're in the basement. My breaths were quick and staggered as we ran through the chilly Kyoto evening. It seemed as though many civilians had been frightened from the sounds of battle, so many homes were shut and locked. There were no signs of people anywhere. Oh. Hi, you there. Oh, crap. Okita picked up something in his periphery, and he disappeared into the alleyway. Don't follow Nagumo. I rushed to follow him. Shall I say a long time no see? Was it you who shot Kondo? Okita brooded with a silent murderous glare. As I looked to see at whom Okita was glaring. Kaoru! Why the sudden change of heart? Huh? The last time you saw me, you called me your enemy. And yet, I still Kaoru to you. What do you want me to call you? You, like I do with everybody else? You! So patronizing. I can't stand you. Ugh. I bit my lip. It was Kaoru who'd tricked Okita into drinking the water of life, but he was still my brother. I knew he was not a good person, but... Okita, on the other hand, seemed to have no such reservations. Answer my question. Or do I need to make you talk? With my sword, that is. You're accusing me without evidence. Humans are so. Ah, yes. I think I do remember. I ran into some men from the Guardians of the Imperial Tomb. Guardians of the Imperial Tomb? They wanted to avenge Ito. You remember him. The man you deceived and murdered. Unfortunately, they didn't have the courage to attack the Magistrate's office. I may have suggested they wait on a particular road, or on a particular day. Ugh. Then you... Oh, don't misunderstand. I didn't mean for him to be hurt. You meant for him to die? I just never thought the chief of the Shinsengumi would be such an idiot. Only three guards? Why, he was practically asking to be shot. Damn you! Okita snarled, and I saw his body tense to attack. So did Kaoru, and with another cruel grin, he snapped his fingers. From the shadows, men suddenly appeared. What? Okita and I stood for a moment, stunned by surprise, and Kaoru took that opportunity to put some distance between us. That's a pretty obvious trap. Oh, somebody's just sour grapes. Your lives are in a precarious state. Both of them were cynical, twisted grins. Ah, oh, what a pair you two are. They glared at one another. I inched my hand toward my sword. I didn't know how much I'd be able to do, but I wouldn't go down without a fight. Still, you are Okita the Shinsengumi. I don't think we can shoot you quite as easily. Huh? Why was Kaoru doing this? What could he be thinking? Your tone's kind of pissing me off, kid. If you got something to say, how about you say it? Oh, I wasn't talking to you. 
I was just suggesting that these fine gentlemen shoot the weaker target first. Oh! As he spoke, I suddenly realized all the guns were pointed toward me. Such a shady piece of crap. Gotta rely on some cheap tricks, huh? Call me what you want. The guns exploded with noise. No! If we were this surrounded, there was no way the both of us could dodge them all. How many of them are there? <laughs> Something blocked my vision. No. Ugh. Suddenly, he was standing in front of me. All the bullets that should have hit me were taken by him. Okita! Why? Why would you do that? I was speechless. Blood was already beginning to pour from his body. The sight of him, tattered and bullet holes, tore my heart apart, but he'd endured the pain, turning around to look at me. You hurt? No, no, I'm fine. You took them all. Good. He smiled out of relief. He wavered, then collapsed to the ground in a heap. Okita! 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 So he could get horribly wounded, but as long as I wasn't hurt, it was okay? It's not okay! It's not okay at all! I felt my vision start to blur, and realized suddenly that I was crying. I... I... My voice broke as I tried to speak. If you get hurt, that makes me sad too! It kills me to see you hurt, just as much as it kills me to see Kondo hurt. I kept calling his name, but he didn't answer. He was still breathing but each breath drew a pained groan from his chest. Okita! If it were just shallow wounds from the bullets, then it shouldn't be too serious, but... If his vital organs were hurt, then his life would undoubtedly be in danger. It was only then that I heard Kalaru's laughter. What an idiot. Well, he did just what I expected him to. You! The blood drained from my face. You were trying to shoot him the whole time, weren't you? <laughs> You tell me. Okita got hurt pretty bad because of you, didn't he? He sure is a dumbass for protecting a useless person like you. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but I had no rebuttal. If I hadn't been there, then Okita wouldn't have been hurt. He never would have been shot, and he might have been able to fight his way out of Kalaru's trap. But I had been there, and now he was dying, and it was all my fault. Kaoru's smile was suddenly gone. You need to suffer some more. At Kaoru's signal, the men drew back. I won't kill you, either of you, so easily. I'm looking forward to our next meeting, dear sister. Damn you! The words were out of my mouth before I realized I was saying them. Kaoru turned to look over his shoulder at me and smiled. If you could just see her face... Hear your voice. The more despair and anger you feel, the more you look like me. How could there be any doubt that we're brother and sister? With one last horrible smile, Kaoru and his men disappeared into the night. After what seemed like an eternity, I heard the murmur of voices. It was the Shinsengumi soldiers who'd been out to investigate the gunshots. About time they caught up. It took a little too long. We carried the barely conscious Okita back to the magistrate's office together. Okita was shot? Yes. Even if they were using the newest revolvers, that shouldn't be enough to put down a fury. They probably had those revolvers, I realized. Each man had fired off several shots without reloading. Even if the wound is deep, it's small. So long as we remove the bullet, the wound should heal. But... Why won't Okita wake up then? I'm not sure. There might be something in the bullet or the guns their soldiers were using, or... We kept tending to his scars. But Okita's wounds weren't healing. He'd fallen into unconsciousness and continued bleeding even after the bullets were removed. <sighs> Things never work out for Okita's health. Hichikata called me into his room. Hey, sorry for calling you over here. It's fine. You see, I discussed this with Sanin. We're going to move Soji to Osaka Castle. Osaka Castle? 
Yeah, Dr. Matsumoto's already there, and he has everything we need for Soji's recovery. Oh. I wanted so badly to be by Okita's side, but... I knew that I needed to tend to the wounded here, including Yamazaki. If I leave Okita to Dr. Matsumoto, I think everything will be alright. As I turn these thoughts over in my mind... Yukimura, I want you to go to Osaka with Soji. What? I wasn't expecting this. My eyes grew wide. I can go with Okita? You don't want to? No, it's not that at all. I was just wondering why, though. Koto will be on battlefield soon. If you stick around here, I'm worried you'll get sucked into the worst of it. Most of all, if I leave Soji unattended, who knows what he'll try to pull. Hey, Jakata. I almost cried. I was so thankful for him. I could still be with Okita. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I bowed deeply to Hijikata. And now into the final chapter. On December 20th, I headed toward Osaka Castle with Okita. Yamazaki came with us to guard us. We heard Dr. Matsumoto performed an initial examination on Okita but his condition didn't improve. As a result, I'd had many sleepless nights. The new year passed, and it was January 3rd. Word came from the messenger that a battle had erupted between the shogunate forces and the Satsuma Choshu troops. And then... We discovered how the end of the battle turned out before even the Shinsengumi was told. Ah, because we were at Osaka. Okita, how do you feel? Hey, what are you doing? That's not obvious. There's gonna be a battle soon, yeah? They need men, so we need to go now. You can't! Please, you need to rest! You're in no condition to get up yet! Besides, even if you go now, I don't know what good you'll be able to do. What are you trying to say? You say that I won't be useful. That's right. That's not what I mean. I wasn't sure if I had the courage to tell Okita what had happened over the past few days. Maybe keeping him in the dark. But if I were to avoid it, I was sure that Okita, whose wit often preceded him, would see right through me. I want you to remain calm as I tell you this. Despite the Shinsengumi's best efforts, the magistrate has fallen. And, supposedly, in no way was one of the lives lost in the ensuing battle. Gan. Yes. And the Supreme Commander, Lord Yoshinobu, has already departed for Edo. So, it seems like we, too, will be heading for Edo aboard a ship. Ugh. As the weight of the truth began to settle for Okita, it seemed as though he struggled to speak. He powerlessly slumped to the top of his bed. Mm. My poor dear. I see. Gens passed away. Kano must have been real torn up, huh? Yes, very much so. Okita held his head low, and he muttered to himself softly, almost like a one-way conversation. I was supposed to be the Shinsengumi's sword. The Shinsengumi's sword. As he processed the news, he repeated this phrase. It almost felt as though he were lost in a trance, attempting to make some meaning of a purpose for which he'd worked his entire life. I drank the water of life just to make sure I could still fight in battle again. But when they needed me the most, I was useless to them anyway. And now we're going to Edo. But... It pained me to see Okita so broken-hearted, so I couldn't help but chime in. I wasn't sure if my words were going to be enough to resonate with him, but... But, Okita, you protected me. Despite not being a real member of the Shinsengumi, you risked your life to defend me. I'm very thankful for you. If you weren't there, Okita, I could have died. Shizuru. Besides, Hijikata and the rest of the men haven't given up yet. He'd said that when we return to Edo, we're going to make a huge comeback, and by then, I'm sure Kondo will be ready to go. Okita paused, scratching his chin in thought as he looked toward the ground. You're right. Hijikata's a resilient one. Doesn't ever give up. There's no way he'd accept defeat. 
Plus, that's why Kondo trusted him with the Shinsengumi. That's why I need him to step up. And last, I sensed Okita was regaining his composure. Chizuru, mind bringing me my sword? Before I did so, I stared into his eyes to check and make sure he seemed out of his slump. All right. I grabbed his sword, which was displayed on a rack, and handed it to Okita. However, when he held the sword in his hand, his tone reverted to the melancholy from earlier. Hey, Chizuru, do you think I could still be the sword for the Shinsengumi? His words inflicted a dull pain upon my heart. I could tell his mind was lingering on the thought of Kondo, as well as the Shinsengumi, which to Okita represented the wishes of Kondo himself. Okita couldn't separate himself from the idea that his own well-being and interests were nothing compared to those to whom he remained loyal. It was something I noticed about Okita. Yes, so please rest for now. So don't worry when the time comes for you to hold your sword. You'll be there. Sure. If you think I should, then I'll just focus on getting better until we head to Eno. So that as soon as we arrive, I'm going to swing my sword at anyone and everyone. I'll make sure anyone who gets in Kondo's way is killed before they even think about it. I couldn't tell if his newfound motivation was out of extreme loyalty to Kondo, or if he'd even be willing to slash at his own body should it not recover as we hope it will. <laughs> Damn body! Heal! Heal already! Ultimately, it's his humanity I worry for the most. Although, knowing Okita, he doesn't share the same fear. <sighs> As the pain in my heart began to subside, I couldn't contain the tears which began welling in my eyes. And so, I had joined Okita on this journey back to Edo for whatever future was waiting for us on our return. Ah, oh, we actually got that line before the credits this time. Although I'm sure we'll get a similar line again after the credits because the summary afterwards is pretty much the same for everybody. Why does poor Okita have to spend all his time convalescing? Poor guy just can't catch a break. But yeah, so we'll have our little short epilogue here after the credits play. And then in the next episode, there'll be his tragic love and bad endings. And then we will move on to Hijikata. So we don't have too much farther to go here. Oh, I'm really hoping I can get this all recorded and done before Calyrex Malice comes out. You have no idea. <laughs> How rough, I've, how hard I've been pushing all this. January 1868 The Battle of Tobofushimi ended with the Satsuma and Choshu victorious. As the Shinsengumi troops retreated, the Shinsengumi headed toward Edo. Four years ago, I came to Kyoto all by myself and searched for my father and met the Shinsengumi. I'm going to leave the city of Kyoto, where I made fond memories with the Shinsengumi. Despite the defeat, his resolve didn't waver, and I have chosen to walk alongside him. We're going to head to Edo, without knowing what fate awaits us. Off to Edo again. Finn. So, yep, like I said, next episode, starting with Hijikata, finally. So, hope to see you there, or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.